What's up, guys? This is Revenge of the Jocks. I'm your host, Marty, and right now I got a really, really special edition of the podcast. I'm sitting down with a Hall of Famer. I know most of the time when I talk about Hall of Famers, it's in sports, but right now I'm talking about someone that's in the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and that's Jermaine Dupree. When people talk about the music industry, they mention a lot of names before mentioning yours. You know, they always think about, like, Dame Dash and Jay-Z, Rockefeller, Diddy, Bad Boy, but, like, not too many people really mention the body of work that you did at So So Deaf. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel like it, it happens that way? I'm a different type of CEO because I'm the person that makes the product that I sell. That's how I am too. You I'm know, the same way. Yeah, yeah they, they, them CEOs, ain't nothing wrong with it. But the yeah. difference between them is that they, they're more like the bosses of the operation. Yes, and they gotta wait for somebody to make the creation for them to sell it. Yes. Right. So a lot of times, while they talking, I'm working. As a CEO of my company, I'm actually the one that's writing the book doing illustrations and you know writing the films i don't wait for someone to bring me a script i make the script and then i'm the one that actually shoots the script and i'm the money behind the script as well yeah so it's not really a lot of people it's not a lot of ceos like that by the way those guys started before me you talk yeah. when you talk about jay prince and you talk about um easy easy e these guys hip-hop ceos they started the blueprint of having a boss like that so that's just the way this business is yeah. they just follow the blueprint of things that already happens so i went to high school at 10 i mean 12 so in the 12 years old i was on the fresh fest from 12 13 14 i was dancing on the fresh fest and i was surrounded around houdini run dmc the fat boys grandmaster flash curtis blow all these people was in my life at 12 yeah. so from 12 13 14 I sucked up as much hip hop as I could possibly get yeah. from the greats and the people that started it, right? From breakers and dancers and all of this. Um, and at 16, that's when I started wanting to make music. Yeah. And at that point, I had a lot of a lot of knowledge in, in me, and I had watched people do things, the way people talk to people, the way people do interviews, a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, what was good and what was not. You was able to just like, I'm not I mean, gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I, I mean, I still was directing myself. Yeah. So I, you know, you hit things, hit bumps, this, that, and the third, but. From 16 to 19, I perfected what I had saw. Basically. So when did you fall in love with music? Your dad's in the industry. Did you fall in lo love with music at an early age? Yeah, I got my I got a drum set for Christmas when I was three years old. And then just from then on, you just been beating on shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I fell in love with sports too. Right before the like 10, 11, I wanted to play football. Did you play? Yeah. What position you play? Um. I played safety. I played linebacker. Man, I would love to see you at linebacker while I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Atlanta is almost like Africa, and and I say this. it is Wakanda. Yeah, you, I, I'm saying this in like the, as a way like it's where all the information is. No one really talks about it, but everyone goes there, steal their information, and come back and 100%. try to make it their own. 100%. You know what I'm saying? So like, if you think about like the way this. Atlanta is like the black mecca, like it's the source of the culture. So everyone goes there to find out what the culture is or pay attention to it, keep their ears to the street, but then they take the culture away from there and then try to use it in their own way. How you feel about the um, the Super Bowl coming to Atlanta and not picking like artists from Atlanta to perform at halftime? I wasn't shocked by it. They never did it like that before. Oh, you yeah, know, the Super true, Bowl's yeah. been in New York, they ain't get Jay-Z. Yeah. They ain't asked Puff to do it. Super Bowl been everywhere, and they didn't ask. So I heard somebody even say, like, so if we pick Atlanta artists um, this year, does that mean that Flo Rida has to do the Super Bowl next year because it's in Miami, right? I think they, they I personally Hell, think they yeah. trying to, yeah, see? I think <laughs> Flo Rida they, got number one. Yeah, Everyone but I, think, I, think, I just think they trying to stay away from being locked into yeah, having to do that. Yeah. 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 You know, to to fix the problem, I'm, I'm throwing six free concerts. The day six days before Super Bowl, um, called Super, Super Bowl Live, basically, um, That's free. Dope as fuck. It's free, and I'm only using Georgia and Atlanta artists. So oh, wow. just for people to that's coming from out of town, so I want to make sure you change the blueprint. Yeah, yeah, I change the blueprint. I want to make sure everybody come to Atlanta and understand how deep the music, the music game is, and how many people started making music before me. The people that we forgot about, um, the soul artists that came out of Atlanta, the country artists that come from Athens, um, and all over. You know, just all over. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do Freak Nick. That sounds fun. Let me tell my wife about that. <laughs> <laughs> I got tag team performing. I got Kilo Ali performing. I got Shadi performing. I got um, every bass artist that's ever came out of Atlanta in the era of Freak Nick. I'm turning that park into Freak Nick. So, like, let's... 
talk about like grooming talent, the artistry in a lot of fields. Like I talk to a lot of kids who want to be writers. They talk, they talk about writing books or they want to write these things, but they don't like to read. Like I feel, I tell them like as a writer, the only way you could grow is by reading. You get more words. You feel how sentences are put together by other authors. So you have to write to become a great writer. But they just want to write. They just want to write Harry Potter the first time they sit down and write something. And so how do you groom young talent now, like you're doing on the rap game, the show? to grow into their artistry. Um, I don't give them no no easy way. You know what I mean? I think that's what that's what we saying too much. We saying too much of an easy way. These kids don't really know what rejection feel like. Yeah. It's no rejection at Spotify. You know, you can put your music up on Spotify. They don't care what it sounds like. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way that this generation is learning. Yeah. And you got to have some kind of kickback. A lot of these kids are scared of kickback. As soon as they hear somebody saying, oh, I don't know about that, they try to move or say, oh, fuck them, they they whack, that's whack, that's that old shit. Yeah. You know, it gets labeled as old shit if yeah. people give them kickback. They need a lot of kickback. People will get way better. When did you turn into a vegan? Uh, 13 years ago. So you've been a vegan for 13 years? You're one of them enlightened brothers. <laughs> <laughs> What made you stop eating meat? I mean, it's kind of cool to be a vegan now, but 13 years ago, that shit wasn't that cool. Um, we just went on a fast, and the way I felt, it felt right. Dame Dasher talked to me about this shit the other day, too. He's a vegan? Yeah. Really? That's what he said, yeah. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. I tried to tell him about this a long time ago, too. He wouldn't listen to me. Yeah, he was telling me he got mad because I was eating wings in front of him. That's when you ain't really sure if you're a vegan yet. I mean, I'm not trying to make everybody around me vegan. I appreciate that. I fast for 25 days, no food. You did no food for 25 days? Yeah. Jesus did 40 days and 40 nights. So they say. I did it too. Did after, I did, after I did it 25 days. See, that's what you now. I went talking? back and did 40 days. So that's what they talk about, living the image of the Jesus. You did it. Like I, you I did. wanted to see if it was real. You'd be more like God. I have a, a docu-series, well, not a series, but a documentary that's coming on uh, We about Jermaine Dupri and Sosa Death. That's going to be tight. But then I have an actual biopic that's coming out by the end of the year. If someone could act you out, who would you want to be the actor to play? Lorenz Tate is the person that I've, that I've been trying to get. Oh, that's a good fit. Yeah. That's a good fit. Yeah. Like, if it was me, I, if I had to pick myself in a film, I would definitely get Samuel L. Jackson to play me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought the new Spider-Man was dope. That shit was great, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought yeah. it was very good. I love yeah. the new art style. Then Peter Ramsey, the, one of the directors on it was, they called him the Obama of animation because he was the first African-American to do a major blockbuster animated film before that one. Yeah, I thought it was dope. I thought um, it was the first yeah, animated, yeah. Yeah. it's the first animation that I felt was very up to date. The little kid had on Jordans. Jordans, yeah. Um, I thought it was super b boy because it went back to like the eighties with him doing graffiti. Yeah, that was so tight. it felt like Beat Street meets something and meets Spider Man. It was yeah. crazy. It was really good. They did a great job clashing the coat. Like you could feel the culture. Yeah, yeah. Right. They didn't like shy away from it being black. You know yeah. what I'm saying? A lot of times studios will do stuff, but they'll be their black, you know what I'm saying, not our black. So yeah. I thought they did a good job of like having this young black kid who's intelligent, had his struggles, and his both parents was there. His dad was, I like the fact that his dad was, you know, a, and a big part of his life. Yeah. Checking on him, like, you need to get in a class, you need to do this, we just want you to be the best. So I like that because a lot of times they'll put single mother homes when it comes to black kids in, film, in films, well, most films overall, but to have both parents in the household for a black kid in a film, I thought it was excellent. I just seen an anime porn animation like I never, Japanese porn I didn't get into that when I went to Japan <laughs> I didn't get it <laughs> it's so graphic because it's so animated yeah because you can pretty so, much do anything it's so crazy yeah. it's like it's like heavy metal the cum shots is like, <laughs> like it's, it's crazy like Michael Bay of it's yeah, the Michael it's, Bay yeah, of yeah. porn it's crazy <laughs> I wasn't planning to watch it yeah what you it just, just happened I just saw it on the internet and I'm like let me click on this and see what it is. But and why? I, you know they target ads on the internet. I just wonder why they target you with the ad for the Japanese porn. <laughs> I mean, if you like, if you on, you on, if you on blog sites. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you don't know what the fuck sites, is gonna pop up. Yeah, you don't know what's gonna pop up. I yeah. was on a blog and I seen it and I was just like, what is this? Yeah. And then it, it came out and it was like. Japanese porn, <laughs> but, it was, but it was anime. Definitely double click on save. <laughs> save. Let, me, let me bookmark this. <laughs> it was crazy. So when I get somewhere private. <laughs> visually, back, keep funky. Visually, it was crazy. I got a new book that I got a new book coming out in March called Dear Black Boy, 
And part of what we're doing is a campaign where we have prominent figures who are able to write letters of encouragement to black boys all over the world. So I might have to get you in on that campaign as well. So let me ask you a question about the book. So what's the what's the meter on putting out children's books? What do you have to sell for people to feel like it's a success or for you to feel like it's a success or what has to happen for it to <laughs> seem like it succeeded? Well, for, for me, it's different because I own the book, I own the art, I own everything for it. So I don't have to sell as many books as other people for it to be successful for my company. Hmm. Right. The ultimate goal of writing a book is to get the message into as many kids as possible. Black people can't read and write for 250. So you think about how far that sets you back. That's a, a huge disadvantage of trying to play catch up. Before I met Biggie and Jay-Z, I wrote songs on paper. When I saw Biggie come to my studio and he wrote a whole song in his head with no paper. And he didn't even mouth the way the rap was supposed to go. He just listened to the beat and he smoked 10 blunts. My nigga. And at the last blunt he said, I'm ready. And I was sitting in the studio looking around like, I thought he was ready to go eat something. <laughs> He's like, I'm ready to do my rap. Where the booth at? Some, at some point, we got to plant a seed and water it and hope that it grows into the plant we want it to be. 100%. So that way they become what the next generation will see. The Super Bowl is going to come to Atlanta. There's a lot of black kids that won't get opportunity to even, you know, feel what's happening inside the city that they live in. So I'm giving seven kids opportunity to shadow me throughout this whole six days, put them to work with inside this Super Bowl Live, and uh, plant that seed that you're talking about. If one of those kids' lives change from that moment, that's, that's, all, I that's care all that about. matters. That's all I care about. Right? That's yeah. If you could change one life, that's huge. That's how I feel about my children's book. If one out of every seven kids who got to see the children's book, their life was changed because of that moment, then yeah. that's success. And I mean, that's what, you know, Killer Mike said, that's what I did to them. And it's crazy because I never really looked at myself as that person to people, other rappers in the city of Atlanta. But Killer Mike told me that um, I was the person that made all of them believe that they could become rappers and stars and be successful in the music industry. I planted that seed.